Hello, Pottsboro Middle School peeps. I am missing all of you really bad. And I have a hard time making videos because I don't look at where I'm supposed to look. So if I'm looking funny, I'm sorry. Um, I want to show you guys the parts of a sewing machine. I know that I showed some of you last year on the same machine. But I didn't have my 6th graders last year. And some of you have slept since then. So I'm going to show you again. This video is about the sewing machine and the parts of it. That's all it's about. We're not making something special. Um, I'm just going to show you how to use a sewing machine. All sewing machines are a little different, but they all work the same. They all have the same type strategies. So what I show you here, you should be able to figure out with your machine if you have one. If not, just learn something from it. You'll get to use them. We got them with our grants this last um, six weeks, and so we're going to get them and be able to use them next time. I'm sorry that we can't use them right now. So anyway... I'm going to show you now how to use the machine. I'll get the light set up. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is turn your machine on. Um, the power button is the one with the, the O or the L. And this one is an embroidery and sewing machine. It does both. We're just going to concentrate on the sewing because we're hand embroidering on our quilt square this week. This is just to learn to sew. This is actually for week three of the textile unit. If you're on this video and you haven't done the quilt square, the hand embroidering, please stop this video and go back to the quilt square lesson first. Um, this is after you've done the hand sewing. Okay. And so you see I have a red, that's the first thing you notice is there is a red light lit up button right here. That button on my machine is it, it gives me an option of using a foot pedal, which is this little guy right here. This is your foot pedal. I prefer to use my foot pedal. If I don't use a foot pedal, then I have too many things going on with my hands trying to hold the fabrics in place and trying to push this button because this button is your alternative option to the foot pedal. And not every machine has another option. Every machine should have a foot pedal, but every machine does not have this button. So we're not gonna worry so much about this button right now unless we go to wind our bobbin thread and I'll tell you the difference then. Okay, <clears throat> so this button and this on mine coincide together because this is the speed of how fast you want this button to go. So if you're using the foot pedal, then you just leave it turned all the way up and you adjust your speed with your foot pedal. The harder you push, the faster it goes. You let up, it slows down. You let completely up off the foot pedal and it stops. Now, also, you have this, sorry, you have this little knob right here. This also moves the needle. So using the foot pedal moves the needle. Using the button moves the needle, if you have one. But also using this hand knob moves the needle. If you need to move your needle and you don't want to use the foot pedal because you just want to move it one inch or whatever, then you would just use the hand knob. This machine also has a raise the needle button. This button will just pull your needle up or put your needle down. Just one time. Whatever you want. Like if you're wanting to secure your fabric in place to sew, you can hit that and it'll lower the needle and it'll hold it there. The presser foot, there's this little gadget right here called a presser foot. And there's a little switch here to raise it and lower it. That holds your fabric in place, but sometimes it'll slip out from underneath that. But if you lower the needle, it'll lock that fabric in place. The needle is through the fabric, so it stays in place. Now, you'll also see the little scissors button. Not every machine is going to have those two things, the lower the needle and the scissors button. If your machine doesn't have the lower the needle, like I said, you can still use the hand knob. And you will have a hand knob. Every machine has a hand knob. The um, 
the scissor button automatically cuts your thread for you when you're done sewing. Cuts it and lets it go. Um, if you don't have one of those, you'll just have to cut your thread manually. Sometimes you'll have a razor over here to cut the thread for you. You just pull the thread through it and it cuts it. Now, um, this has an automatic needle threader that has big, been giving me fits lately, so it may not work, but it's okay if it doesn't because I'm going to show you how to thread your needle, whether you have an automatic needle threader or not. Um, this is where your thread is. It's up here. This is where you wind your bobbin. Your bobbin is this little spool of thread that works from the bottom up. So your big spool of thread goes on top, and it works from the stitches going down, from the top going down, and the bobbin is a little spool of thread that works on the stitches coming up from the bottom. So you need thread in both this and this at all times. If you run out of thread in one or the other, some machines will keep going, but all of a sudden, your piece, your two pieces of fabric you're trying to sew together will just fall apart because it only had one thread going one direction. If you've still got it on the top, but you ran out on the bottom, you may not notice it at first because you still see this getting punctured and going through the fabric, but this here is gone. So you have to pay attention. Uh, my machine won't let me do that. It tells me bobbin thread is running out or upper thread is running out. Um, and when it does that, I have to stop and I have to fill it up. And we'll do that in just a minute. But right now, I just want you to be able to start and play around with your machine. We're just going to use this little scrap of fabric to show you how to actually sew with your machine. And remember, you can tear fabric. If it's normal fabric, cotton fabric <clears throat> works the best. You can make a little slit and you can tear a pretty straight line. It's not perfect, but it's pretty straight. Um, so you raise the presser foot. That's this little guy. And by the way, you should always have a tool kit that comes with the, um, and that won't come in a box like this, but you'll have all these tools that come with a machine. These are very important tools. These are the presser feet for different stitches. This one's for embroidery and it's crazy looking. Um, it also has the um, different screwdrivers. These are very different than normal screwdrivers. Um, in order to get into the machine, and we'll do that in the end, I wanna show you how to clean your machine because it's very important that you clean and oil your machine when you've been doing lots of projects. Um, so you'll have this toolkit, and in a toolkit you should always have a seam ripper. What a seam ripper does is saves you if you put a seam in the wrong spot. You'll need to rip it out and start over. And this little sharp guy, he can hurt you. He's very sharp. But he will get rid of the seams for you that you don't want. Um, so you'll have a tool kit like that. And you'll also have bobbins. I go ahead and I keep bobbins in all colors ready so that if I need to patch something real quick, I don't have to stop and wind a bobbin in the thread color that I need to begin with. Not everybody keeps that ready. You know, I'm extra. Um, and then I have white because you use white the most. Or I, I use white the most. So, I just wanted to show you those. Okay, so I've got this piece of fabric. We're going to fold it in half. And we're going to sew some stitches sewing these two pieces together. Okay. Very simple. Now, first thing I'm going to teach you how to thread the machine because you may not have any thread in it. If your machine threads like mine, it has these little discs. You need the disc that is bigger, just bigger, not huge bigger, but just bigger than the end of your thread that you're going to use. Why are they all different sizes? Well, because all threads come in different sizes. I have a good example right here. Hold on. I have this blue thread that has a tiny top. So this would be way too big for that. It wouldn't work. So you have in your toolkit or should have in your toolkit different sizes if your thread's like mine. And so this one would be the appropriate size to use with this spool of thread. 
giant, but we're not using that thread. So, put that back and I'm going to use this, okay? Now, the way the thread goes in a top loading machine like this is the string is coming down and at you. So, I don't have it facing up. It's not up on the top of the spool. It's down, facing down and coming at me. So, under and coming at me. You're going to slide it onto the little stick, and then you're going to put the cap on to hold it on there. Now, you've got this thread. You've got to hold it on this spool. you got to hold the spool still. So, I kind of grab it right here. And then you're gonna pull it through the number one. It actually has a diagram to show you how to thread this needle or how to thread to fill a bobbin, okay? We're not gonna do a bobbin yet. We're gonna do that in a minute. But you're going to follow the little diagram. It goes one, two, down here for three, up here for four, back down for five, there's a six tucked back there. You have to kind of hold the thread to get it through the six. Seven is the needle threader. We'll see if it wants to work today. The needle threader, here's, it says nine. I guess eight is, I don't know. Nope, didn't work. Okay, so normally that would thread my needle and I would pull it through, but something is up with my machine. Not sure. Um, so what we're going to do is we're gonna thread the needle, which I needed to show you anyway, because some of you don't have an automatic threader. Um, you need some good sharp scissors to trim your threads with, because if they're not sharp, it will fray the end, and you won't be able to get it through the hole in the needle, because they're really, really small. Okay, so you got this tiny little thread. I always put it in my mouth a little bit, get a little wet, I know that's, not quarantine safe, but you're by yourself. Um, you've got the little hole in the needle. You're going to poke it through from the front to the back. And I know it's hard for you to see, but I just got it through the hole. I'm going to pull the thread. And if, if you can see, the thread got tangled around my presser foot, so I just pull it out and make sure it's not tangled. Now, I've got my needle threaded from front to back. I'm going to push it down through the crack in the presser foot and pull it to the back of the machine. That's how you want to keep your upper thread. Now, I've got a little too much back here, so I can trim it off with scissors or I can use my little cutter right there so that I don't have a ton of thread hanging. Now, your bobbin thread. We're going to pretend, you know, I just needed to switch bobbins. Um, and you have this little spool of thread. You also have diagrams down here that you need to pay attention to because the thread goes a certain way and your machine might be a little different than mine, so you have to pay attention to that. The thread would either be hanging from the left or hanging from the right. And right here on the diagram, it shows me coming from the left. So I lay my bobbin thread down in the hole and I bring my thread around where the arrows show. I'm going to follow the little path of the arrows and voila, it cuts the thread, trims it perfectly in the hole, and you put the little top back on it. Okay, so we're all threaded. We're ready to go. Um, we've got our fabric. We're going to put our fabric under the presser foot, so we have to raise it and lower it for that. Lower your presser foot, and now... There's also an option where you can move your needle side to side. So say I'm over here and I'm wanting to be very particular and I wanna make a seam right up next to the edge, okay? I don't wanna make it that far out where the needle is. I wanna bring the needle in closer to the edge. I'm gonna switch sides, watch the needle move. It switched to the side closest to my edge. Now I'm gonna make sure my fabric is good and straight and this is where pinning it would be helpful. So if I pin my fabric down here, I'm gonna pin sideways, not up and down like this. Don't pin up and down because it'll get stuck in the machine. You're gonna pin sideways 
so that you can pull it out easily before you get to that stitch. Now I'm gonna put my foot on the presser, I mean, not the presser, I'm gonna put my foot on the foot pedal and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna start slowly because I wanna make sure I know what I'm doing. See this little U-turn button here? If you have a U-turn button, you're gonna wanna use it. What it will do is automatically reinforces the start and the finish of a seam. So you don't have any unraveling later on, okay? So now I'm gonna start slowly so you can see but you gotta go straight. Now, once you get it through the back a little, always easier to grab it from the back and hold it there to keep it straight. And I'm really close to the edge. I don't recommend that. Look, I had to stop and pull my pin out. I'm really close to the edge and I don't recommend that stitch unless you're really good at this and you've been doing it for a while because what could happen, okay, I'm at the end. Now watch, I'm gonna hit the cut button. Wait a minute, no, I'm not. I'm gonna hit the backwards button and it's gonna reinforce that seam. Okay, now I lied. I gotta hit it up here. You, you have to hold it down to do it with the button. You have to do it up here to get it automatically to do it on the touch screen on mine, I'm sorry. Okay, so, see now it's automatically doing it. It reinforces, goes back and forth a couple times and then it automatically cuts too because I chose the automatic cut. You can see my stitch is right on that line. It is right on the line. That is a hard stitch to do if you've not done this a lot. So stay a little further away from the edge. So your needle would be back over there. I'm gonna do another one on the other side doing that for you, but I'm gonna turn this inside out and show you that it's all joined all the way down. That one little stitch did that. Okay, so now we're gonna do one. Actually, I'm gonna do the trim on the top of this. So I'm gonna make this little pouch. I might as well just turn this into something. So before I sew down the other side, I wanna, I wanna make the edge of this nice and smooth. So I'm gonna turn it in. This is where pinning it is coming in handy. I'm gonna pin it in the beginning. Remember to go sideways. When you pin something, you go in and come back up to hold it in place. So you're gonna pin, I'd say pin this three times. And the first one you're gonna pull back out before you even get started. It's just to hold it in place while you get it figured out. Just because you put a pin somewhere doesn't mean you have to leave it there. Okay. I've got my three pins. I just wanna make my edge look pretty. I don't want my edge to be all, you know, frayed. Okay, but I don't want this to be all the way over at the edge because I don't want this little flap to pop up. So I'm gonna to wanna to make my stitch closer to the flap edge, if that makes sense. Now, I'm gonna pull out my first pin. You don't sew over a pin. You will break your machine. Got to pull the pin out, so you have to pay attention when you're sewing. Now it's on automatic U-turn, so I'm gonna go ahead and just start, and it automatically will go back and forth a couple times just to, see, did it real quick, but it automatically did it. Now I'm gonna pull my pin out in the middle. I'm gonna keep going. Oh, did you hear that? What happened then is it ran into that seam, that cross seam, and it kind of got off a little bit. Now, I wasn't holding it in the back. If you're holding it in the back, that's not gonna happen as much. You might still hear it, but it's not gonna get off. Now, I might've just messed it up. So actually, that's really good that I did that because I'm gonna show you how to fix it. Don't reinforce. <clears throat> if you mess up, just hit the cut button or hit the raise needle button, or if you have to use the hand, um, knob, you just raise the needle up and cut the thread yourself, raise the presser foot and pull it out. 
See, when it got messed up, it started to get out of line and go up. It didn't knot, so we're still good, but it could have knotted. If you mess up, you want to pull it out and fix everything and then start back up again. That way you don't have a mess or it doesn't knot down in your machine because that's a pain when that happens. But you can see here, I'm making a nice little trim on my deal. Now I'm going to put this under here. I'm going to lower it back down where I left off, line it up, and I'm going to hold it this time in the back. See, it automatically went forward and backwards. I'm going to get to where my needle is and take my needle out. And now finish out slowly so it doesn't mess up. Okay, when I get to the end, I'm going to hit the reverse button and it's going to automatically forward and backward a couple times. <clears throat> automatically cuts for me because I chose that option. Pull it out and there you go. Now you have a nice little trim. Now I want to sew this last side, but I don't want to sew it like this because then it's going to be all frayed. I want to get it to look like this side did. So to do that, I need to turn it inside out like this. And then, after I get it lined up good, I'm gonna lay it on my machine. I'm gonna need to pin it first, I can tell. It's not lining up perfectly. Because I did, this is not a planned out project. I was just gonna sew a couple straight lines. So, in order for me to make it look right, I have to pin it here and then line it up good. Okay. It's more important for the mouth of the piece to be lined up correctly. So you want to get the most important part lined up. Doesn't matter as much on the bottom where you're not going to see it on the inside. So the outside of the mouth is the most important part. Okay, now. I'm gonna start there. Because of that, I'm actually gonna start there. So I'm gonna pull my pin back out and just line it up under here. Now, I'm gonna want to stay on the inside this time and not close to the edge because my edges are not identical on this. They're kind of off. So I'm going to stay on the inside and not close to the edge on this one. And I don't need a pin down here because it's already together. Don't put your finger under the needle, obviously. Okay, I'm gonna hit the reverse. And there you go. So now we have a nice straight line. Now let's flip it inside out, see what we got. And if you need to use a tool to pop those corners out and make them look nice and straight, you can use anything um, that would fit in the corner. I just I have a tool turnabout with all kinds of tools there, but I mean, they make special tools that do that job, but, and I have those, but I have all kinds of things. So just use what you got. And then you have a little pouch and you just trim your little extra threads off. And if you want to press it, you can iron it, press it flat. So it's nice. I don't know what this, what I'll use this for. Maybe a deck of cards. I don't know. But it's a cute little pouch. And I hope you've learned something about sewing with a machine. Um, there is a mask tutorial that I recommend you use and make a mask. If you don't have any ideas of your own, you could use the mask tutorial. If you have an idea of your own, you can do your own thing. Um, this would be a great little doll bed pillow, too, if you have a little sister that plays with dolls, or I played with dolls till I was older. Um, okay, so now we're going to pretend we're all done. We've done a big project. Um, we've ran out of bobbin thread, and we want to um, fill up another one. 
So you're going to have a blank one because it's going to run out. So you won't need to go find a blank one, but I'm going to use a blank one to show you how to thread a bobbin. All right. So remember how we threaded the machine down to here? Well, we don't want that for bobbin thread. So we pull it back out. We don't have to take it off. It still goes on the same way, but it gets threaded differently. So this is our little bobbin. We poke it onto this little part right here. So it snaps down on there. Now we're gonna hold our thread and we're gonna follow the diagram for bobbin winding. So it goes one, two, you gotta hold it and get it on there good. And then it goes over here to three and it shows it going behind that bobbin, wrapping around probably like a few times, holding it here and then pushing this bobbin over. Then taking the thread through the little razor and cutting it. Now, if this is not tight and good, it will not work. So I'm just gonna warn you, if it doesn't work, you didn't have it threaded good. See how nice and tight, I hope you can see how nice and tight the thread is. Now you unplug your presser foot on my machine. You might not be able to do that or have to do that on yours. So you'll have to refer to your user manual to see what you have to do to thread your bobbin. But I unplug my presser foot and then I have to use this button. It automatically winds. I don't know if you can see that thread going up and down. That doesn't help. Anyway, the thread is going up and down on that bobbin perfectly equally. It does that automatically for you. It's so cool. Because if it's not even, it's going to get tangled up in your machine. When it's done, it automatically slows to a stop. You can turn it off, pop it back open, take this off, cut it on the little, the little um, razor, and you have a perfectly threaded bobbin. Now I'm going to plug my presser, I mean my uh, foot pedal back in. So I'm quit holding it. And then I'm going to re-thread my machine. So I've already got it through one and two. I'm going to go down to three, back up to four, back down to five. Tuck it in six. I'm going to try seven again because I'm wishful thinking and it didn't work. And so now I'm going to thread my needle. And I'm going to have to turn it nice and straight. And thread it. Okay. And make sure it's not tangled up because I just tried to tangle it up again. Front to back and not in a knot. Not in a knot. And not wrapped around the presser foot. Okay. Now, let's pretend we've got a dirty mess under here because we did a whole lot. We're going to pull our bobbin thread out. And you're going to blow in there or dust it out. If it's really bad, you have to disassemble with your little um, screwdrivers, specially made screwdrivers. You have to disassemble these flat screws here, take it all apart and dust it. And if it hasn't been oiled in forever, you're gonna use the machine oil, the all-purpose machine oil and just put a couple drops where the bearings are inside here. And then you're gonna just dust it all up. I use an old toothbrush. Like this, it's really dirty looking because I use it for this machine and it gets the oil on it. So I use an old toothbrush and tweezers to pull the thread lumps and fabric pieces that are stuck down in there. I use these two items to clean down in there. Then I use the drop of oil and then you put it all back together and you re-thread your bobbin. And you are ready to sew the next time you need to. And it's all clean and prepared and your machine is well taken care of, okay? Let's see, I think that's all I needed to show you for this. Please remember, you should have already watched the quilt square video, but if you haven't, go back and do that. Look, I did it in 30 minutes. It's 29 minutes and 45 seconds. I love you all. Have fun with sewing.